BBC Radio Manchester's the Liberal Democrats in Manchester have described the City Council's record on accepting Syrian refugees as appalling. The former MP, John Leach, who is now the city's one opposition councillor, says the city has yet to accept a single Syrian refugee since a government scheme was set up to help those fleeing the war-torn country. Manchester City Council says it's willing to play its part in assisting the international effort to address the humanitarian crisis in Syria and is looking at how it can provide further support. And Sam will be talking to John Leach after this bulletin. Senior UN official says many people in Aleppo are now eating less than one meal a day and doctors there say if attacks continue, there could soon be no hospitals or clinics left. Well, you might say, what does that mean for us here in Greater Manchester? Well, did you know Manchester City Council has yet to accept a single Syrian refugee under the resettlement scheme? You might remember it was announced by the then Prime Minister David Cameron in 2015. Now, that's according to the councillor, John Leach, who says we need to do much more. Well, let's speak to him now. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So you you raised this issue, didn't you, at the full council meeting. What did other your fellow councillors say about this? Um, well, I, I only got a response from the uh, from the deputy leader who was answering my question because my initial question was how many unaccompanied Syrian child refugees had been housed within Manchester in each year since the beginning of the conflict, and we're talking about single figures um, of unaccompanied Syrian child refugees. Um, But then there was a a specific scheme that was introduced um, last year by the government um, to uh, to rehouse uh, in in the UK 20,000 Syrians and not a single uh, Syrian has been uh, has come to Manchester under that scheme at all, which I think is shameful. We have a very large, dedicated Syrian community here in Manchester that is very uh, willing and able to to support. Mm. Coming refugees. Yeah, and they, they have done that. We've got figures here that 112 unaccompanied asylum-seeking children from around the world have been, have been accepted since 2011. Um, that's from around the world. That's not just Syrian um, refugees. Um, okay. Manchester has a uh, has a long history of being welcoming to people uh, fleeing violence. Unfortunately, uh, the Tory government uh, went back on a commitment uh, to fund the support uh, the the support of dis- um, dispersal of uh, asylum seekers around the country, and um, the, unfortunately, councils in Greater Manchester have then used that as a political football to say, well, we're not going to take um, any Syrians under the under the scheme that was set up, the Syrian Vulnerable Persons Resettlement Yeah, so when, when did they do like that? It. When did the government do that? Because the, the initial deal, of course, that they'd be supported for a year, central government would pay for a year, and then it was after that that some questions came into call. You're saying that's no longer the case? Well, ba- basically, the government reneged on its on its deal to su- financially support um, the, uh, the dispersal of uh, asylum seekers in general, um, and as a result of that, now uh, councils in Greater Manchester are saying that they won't take anyone under the uh, under the resettlement scheme uh, that was set up last year specifically for Syrian refugees. Really? Now, so that's that's local... council policy. That's actually in black and white policy yes. of the council not to take yes. anyone in. Yes, and um, the Rethink uh, Rebuild Society, which is a local based um, Syrian charity, they're not asking for for the earth. They're asking to um, for Manchester um, to house 50 families out of the 20,000. Um, Syrian refugees that the government has agreed to take in. So it's 50 families. That's the equivalent, equivalent of one fa- just over one family per uh, per council ward in Manchester. I don't think that that's impossible for Manchester to do. Um, but unfortunately, councils in Greater Manchester are using this as a as a stick to beat the government with because the government rene- deal in relation to um, asylum seekers from across the world uh, who aren't getting the funding that, um, that local authorities were promised. So if if that's an impasse, what is the next stage? If, if Manchester City Council, and we, we don't have a response from them that this is official policy, because the council spokesperson we spoke to said we stand willing to play our part in assisting the international effort to address the humanitarian crisis in Syria. Syria. Manchester continues to work with the Greater Manchester Combined Authority to assess how we can provide further support. You're saying, though, that's not really true? If 
that if that's the case, Man uh, Manchester Council should be saying to the combined authority, no, we don't support the combined authority's policy of, of not taking anyone in under that particular scheme, because they've said quite categorically that uh, they're not going to take any, um, anyone under that scheme uh, until the, the government actually uh, helps to fund um, displaced asylum seekers under, under a general policy of dispersal of asylum seekers across the country. Because, to be fair, in the North West and Greater Manchester in particular, um, we've taken uh, a significant number of asylum seekers. But the situation in Syria is so desperate, and Manchester is, is in, a, in a better position than many local authorities because it has uh, a strong um, uh, Syrian community here in Greater Manchester that actually want to help. They're, they're here to help, and they're ready to help. But at the moment, Manchester is saying no, Greater Manchester is saying no. And what, the reason why I raised this in council was to make sure that mm. people were aware of the position that um, Manchester and Greater Manchester had taken. Uh, so hopefully that they, um, they will actually change their view, because frankly, we're not talking about um, thousands and thousands of people. We're talking about a small number of uh, people who have fled uh, the conflict in Syria and need to be supported. Finally, John, and we don't have much time, unfortunately, there will be people listening to this who say, wait a minute, I can't get my children into a local school and my grandchildren. I've been waiting months for my operation because the NHS is so severely underfunded. I know you're saying it's only 50 families, but that's another 50 families who are going to drain a system which is already overstretched. What do you say to them? Uh, well, I'd say to those people... Go and try living in the conflict zone in Syria and see the difference. I think we, we, we have a long history in this country of supporting people fleeing violence, whether it be whether it was through the, uh, the, the, uh, the world wars or other conflicts. Uh, and I think we should be doing playing our part to make sure that um, f people fleeing uh, the violence in Syria do actually have a home to go to. OK, John Leach, councillor, thank you very much indeed. Do let me know your thoughts on that. 81333 is where you can tell.